SpaceX CEO Elon Musk once claimed that his biggest concern is to get people to Mars before he dies. He elaborated on his extremely ambitious plans to establish a sustainable settlement on Mars. A thousand starships will be needed to create a sustainable Mars city as the planets align only once every two years. That's why he has hastened the production of rockets, first of all, the Raptors. And despite its complexity, SpaceX is developing this engine at ludicrous speed. And what Elon stated via Twitter made it evident that SpaceX is quickly approaching the capability to build one Raptor engine every 48 hours. That's every two days. As unbelievable as it may sound, well, you better believe it. But how exactly are they doing this? Well, let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The development process of SpaceX's Raptor engine itself can be regarded as an engineering miracle within the industry. Its speed and frequent iterations are beyond the reach of competitors. Relative to almost any other large-scale engine development program in the last half century, Raptor's 29-month 100th engine milestone is an extraordinary achievement. We can look at the competitor Blue Origin's BE-4. This engine is also a methane liquid oxygen engine with design indicators similar to the Raptor. Full-scale BE-4 testing began 16 months before Raptor in October of 2017. But in the following four years, only nine prototypes have been manufactured and tested. Meanwhile, as of May of 2021, SpaceX is now building more than a dozen Raptors, including prototypes and flight engines every month. So why is there such a gap in both companies' progress? In SpaceX's case, it's believed that their obsession with processes may factor in for why there is such a large disparity between the two private space agencies. Every single step of the manufacturing process is as optimized as the world's greatest engineers can possibly make it. SpaceX even had specialized 3D printers 10 years ago, specifying the shape of a tube and no matter how complicated it is, the machine will perfectly replicate it over and over again. Although SpaceX's engineers love their 3D printers, not everything is printed via these machines. Many components of early Raptor prototypes were manufactured using 3D printing, including turbo pumps and injectors, with the effect of increasing the speed of development and iterative testing. 3D printing is simply much faster than any conventional method and can also work 24 hours a day. The most components that SpaceX can 3D print, the faster and more efficient their manufacturing process will be. 3D printers are the perfect machine to allow you to slightly tweak the design for something without causing huge delays in the assembly line. Without the ability to 3D print, it could take days or weeks to recast a component based on updated specifications. The fact that the Starship project is well-funded could be another reason for the rapid manufacturing time that SpaceX currently holds. SpaceX has been developing the Starship system with private funding. However, the owner of SpaceX, Elon Musk, he's the world's richest man. He has plans to dedicate as much money as he can to fulfill his desire. Last year, Musk shocked the world when he announced that he would be selling off his entire property portfolio and that he will own no house to focus on colonizing Mars. Other than that, Musk has also repeatedly said that he hopes profits from SpaceX's other businesses, including Starlink, a satellite internet venture, will help fuel the development of his Martian rocket. On the other hand, the company has also steadily raised funds from banks and venture capitalists in the past few years. SpaceX even raised $1.9 billion in its previous funding round in August of 2020. It has raised more than $7.5 billion in equity to date, and it really wouldn't be that hard for them to raise more if they needed it on top of that. SpaceX contracts also brought a large profit, especially the $2.9 billion lunar lander contract that NASA awarded to SpaceX in April of this year. But besides that, SpaceX isn't the only organization interested in this technology. Raptor itself is well on its way to full production, partly thanks to the U.S. Air Force. 
Back then, from 2009 to 2015, Raptor development was funded solely by SpaceX. But in January of 2016, SpaceX pocketed $33.6 million from the U.S. Department of Defense to develop a variant of the Raptor designed to be used on the upper stage of a Falcon 9 and a Falcon Heavy. What I'm trying to say is... Finance? It's not an issue for SpaceX. But we can't forget that Musk himself is also a decisive factor in this process. The president and chief operating officer of SpaceX, Gwyn Shotwell, who's worked with the iconic entrepreneur for more than a decade and a half, shared her experience. Why couldn't we just say 15 years? According to her, it's tough, but it's also inspiring. He's funny, and fundamentally, without him saying anything, he drives you to do your best. He doesn't have to say a word. You just want to do great work, said Shotwell. So I love working for Elon. Um, I've been doing it for 16 years this year, actually. He pushes his teams to work on ambitious schedules. There's no question that Elon is very aggressive on his timelines, but frankly, that drives us to do things better and faster. The man even slept on the floor of the Tesla factory because he doesn't have time to go home and shower. Tim Dodd's video on Everyday Astronaut features an unpolished Elon Musk sweating in the early evening heat of South Texas, sleep deprived, afflicted with serious back pain, uncaring about his physical appearance but always intense and obsessive. If you want more details, you can watch this video on the Everyday Astronaut channel. This is a great YouTube channel about space. You would have a serious case of FOMO if you did not follow their channel. Seriously, go ahead. I'll take I'll take like two seconds for you. Or you can just pause this video and go over there and check it out and come back. Don't worry, I'll wait. Ah, I see you're back. Cool. So let's continue. The last reason we believe is related to SpaceX's philosophy of treating every failure as a compulsory step. During an interview for a 2005 article in Fast Company, the founder of SpaceX gave what has become one of his most enduring quotes. There is a silly notion that failure is not an option at NASA, Musk said. Failure is an option here. If things are not failing, you are not innovating enough. Under this approach to the design of Raptor, there is undoubtedly more accidents, but SpaceX is willing to tolerate some failure to go fast. With iterative design, the company builds Raptors, tests them, and flies them as quickly as possible. This approach strongly contrasts with more traditional aerospace, in which years are spent refining a vehicle's design before building a vehicle. This typically results in fewer explosions, but requires a lot more time and funding. SpaceX is good at fly, test, fail, fix. The willingness to fail is something that NASA has lacked for a very long time, but it's what enables SpaceX to move so fast, to rapidly iterate and improve. Musk revealed plans for a dedicated Raptor engine factory on July 10th of this year, shortly after showing off an impressive group of at least 10 qualified Raptor engines staged inside a production tent at SpaceX's Boca Chica Starship factory. If all goes according to plan, that facility could also become the highest output rocket factory ever built, churning out hundreds of Raptor engines each year to outfit a vast interplanetary fleet of starships and the Earth-bound Super Heavy Boosters that will send them on their way to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and eventually beyond. By then, space colonization will no longer be just a mere pipe dream. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Be sure to also give us a thumbs up if you think we did a great job on this video. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring the bell so you won't miss out on any space and SpaceX related news. Everyone's support will give us the motivation to keep delivering quality content. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, here to thank you so much for what you've done for us so far. My team and I will see you next time.